The 38th annual World Series of Poker has come to an end. After a month and a half of intense poker action at the Rio, there is a new world champion. The main event finished up early this morning, and the champion, as I'm sure you all know by now, is Jerry Yang. But let's start at the beginning. There were four day ones, and each of them saw countless eliminations. On day 1A, players like Joe Awada, Mike Sexton, and Victor Ramden ended their main event run. PokerStars Caribbean Adventure champion Ryan Dow went out on day 1B when he got all of his money in with pocket eights on a board of 887 with two hearts. He was called by a player holding the 910 of hearts. His opponent hit the jack of hearts to complete a straight flush and beat Dow's quad eights. Day 1C saw the elimination of Team PokerStars member Vanessa Russo. She moved all of her chips in with a set of fives but lost to her opponent's set of queens. This was the third event this year that saw Russo eliminated with set over set. The last day one saw plenty of eliminations, but pros did move on. That list included Vinnie Vin's chair. And on 2A, pros like Huck Seed, Jeff Madsen, and Scotty Wynn returned to the felt. One day 2A casualty was talk show host Montel Williams. Day 2B survivors included Gus Hansen and Sorrell Imperium Mitzi, both of whom went into day 3 as chip leaders. Finally, the entire field was able to fit into the Amazon room at the same time. 797 players remained when day 3 play began, and six of them already had a main event championship bracelet to call their own. Those men were Barry Johnston, Huck Seed, Scotty Wynn, Chris Jesus Ferguson, Carlos Mortensen, and Robert Varconi. After hand-for-hand -hand play, they reached 621 players, which was the money bubble. The unlucky soul was John Saigan. After he busted, everyone was guaranteed to leave with at least $20,000. Play ended when they reached 337 players. Of those day four players, 74 were not from the United States. 27 countries were represented in the Amazon room. Nick Binger, whose brother Michael came in third in last year's main event, exited in 165th place, which was good for over $51,000. During the last level of day four, Billy Baxter and Thor Hansen were also eliminated. Day 5 began with 112 players and ended with only 36. Scotty Wynn began the day by beefing up his chip stack courtesy of Corey Carroll. Humberto Brennis and Huck Seed were eliminated towards the end of Day 5. Day 6 began at noon as usual and the players had to play until 27 of them were knocked out. Of the 36 players left at the start of the day, some of the most recognizable names were Daniel Alahi, Bill Edler, Lee Watkinson, and the Prince of Poker himself, Scotty Wynn. Unfortunately for Wynn, a repeat of his 1998 mini-event win was not to be. He just missed making this year's final table and left the reel with just under half a million dollars. Lizzie had the chance to talk to Scotty about his incredible main event run the day after he busted. We are here in the Card Player Studio with Scotty Wynn. Now, Scotty Wynn made it very deep into this year's main event. Scotty, what place did you come in? <sighs> Eleven. Yeah. Tell, tell us about playing the main event. What was it like making through making it through a field of almost seven thousand people to all the way down? You know, it's just um, it's long uh, event, but, you know. And uh, when I when I'm the very very first first day, mm -hmm. it's the car run, and and I know I have the, the feeling. Plus, you know, I'm I'm so confident. You know, I'm yeah. I'm gonna get there. I'm gonna go so deep. You're always confident. You know, Absolutely. I'm I'm gonna be so deep. And uh, this year, because I don't think about how big the, the, the event is. The field is, you know, this is one table is, at a time. Yeah, yeah, one table at a time. All I have to do to deal with is nine player, you know, and uh, and I never, never look around, you know. Every time I look around, like, I get panicked because it's nothing but head, you know what I mean? So <laughs> I, I stop to do what I do and I just concentrate, focus the player at my table, you know. And, uh, just play slow and you know, and taking my my time and play serious poker. You know, not just coming and thinking about I got no shot with the few like this like, like, like last yeah. couple of years. You know, just walk in and I feel like yes, there's no way I'm gonna. It feels pass, hopeless. But, you know, very and, and and this year I feel just totally different. I, I and I feel I wanna be so deep. You know, and, and which is you know I I, I prove that. I yeah, mean, you were I, a chip you know, leader on day yeah. one, right? One of the chip leaders yes. up there in the chip counts? Yeah, and um, you know, 11 player, I'm like top three, you know. How'd you get up to the top three? Because you weren't up there at the beginning of that day, and then all of a sudden you were at the top of the chip Just counts. Just playing good poker, man. Yeah. yeah. And, and, and didn't get panicked, you know, don't matter how big the, the play go up, I didn't get pan panicked. Just play my, uh, my game and uh, play good poker, you know. When you play good poker, 
and luck will come, will, will find you, you know, and uh, you, you just, just cannot de de depend on luck when you come out and play, okay, skill will hit you there, but That's at true. the end you need little luck in, in, in ball, and 11 player, and I was too aggressive, and I made a couple wrong, wrong move, and luck go away, you know, because when you play wrong, luck can, cannot come to you, yeah. you know, you play good, luck comes. But when you play bad, luck go away, you know, and, and, and that's what I happened. I was playing bad. I got no excuse there, baby. You know, I have a good word, sure, sure run, and uh, a yeah. little disappointed, but I got no no excuse there when you play bad, but that's what happened. So what did you think about the field this year? Did you find the players to be any different, more aggressive, more passive than past World Series? Yeah, you know, um... I never, I, you know, like the past couple of years, I haven't been so deep, so I, I didn't learn learn much about the field or the player. Yeah. This year, I, 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 I getting so deep, I have a chance to learn um, from uh, the player, you know, and all over the world, and yeah. they, especially all those young, young, young gun, they think they, they can push me around, things like that, and I show, show them, you know, you can push anybody around, but can I push Scotty Wynn, don't matter what. So how did you show them that? Knock them out, baby. you know, and and they see, you know, they they walk on the way, they talk to themselves, and man, should never push Scotty around, you know, baby. That's that's the good lesson for them to learn, you know. So, a rough estimate: how many players do you think he knocked out out of sixty-seven hundred? About uh, yeah. four forty. Really? Yeah. Wow. Yes, and you know, just like the first couple of hours, I knock out about four, four players. The very first day, first couple of rounds, I knock out about four, five, or six players. Were people really just giving their chips away? That's what I heard on like the day one and the day two. People yes. were just handing out their chips. They, they just give me the, the chip because they figure they got nothing to lose but gain, you know. They, and they get a story out of it. Yeah, they, uh, if they knock me out, they have some something to say, you know. Or uh, if, if I, I knock them out, they still get something to say. So they got nothing to lose but gain, you know. Yeah. So what were you thinking when it got to day three, day four, and you're getting closer to the final table? What was running through your mind every morning? Just talk to my wife, and, uh, you know, every night, and she met me. Uh, she met you. I jump in uh, in the pool. And, <laughs> cool off. You know, yes. It's, it's don't matter. Um, don't matter what how tired I I I, I get. She say, honey, go clean your car. And then after that, me and her, you know, we just jump in the pool and do do some laugh, just you know, just relieve all the stress, you know, and, yeah. and then get ready for the next next day. You know, I I just feel good about this event here. But I have a chance to make history, you know, the only yeah. the only man gonna be re, re, repeated, you know, it's Main like event, twenty yeah. years from now. Maybe there is nobody even come close like the way I I come close now. Yeah. But you but make it through that field. I'm promise next year gonna be the same thing. Yeah. I'm gonna do better next year. You know, not not just eleven. Like when you told me when you won your first bracelet every year, you said I'm gonna win it. I'm gonna win it. You have to believe you're gonna win it, yeah. and then you won it. Next next year I'm I'm gonna win it. So do you think you have an advantage over some of the players who don't live here in Vegas, who are holed up in the Rio or the Bellagio, whereas you can go home to your wife and your children, swim in your pool? Do you think that helps out your game? Yes, it's, you know, at, uh, my advantage is um, I have a life, you know. <laughs> they don't. A lot of you poker know, players, yeah. Yes, they, uh, you know, most poker players, all they ever think, get up in the morning and hit the po poker game and stay there un un until... You know, the, the sun go go down, the wife sleep, the kid go sleep, but I'm not like that, you know. I stay home home with them most of the time. I enjoy them and, you know, we do cooking and we stay outside, just talk and check on my son's flower, you know. Uh -huh. I, 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 I love all my flower and see the one, you know, it's like... You know, if I uh, lay lay around in bed, she go, honey, just go, I go out, outside, look at your sunflower, relax, you know. And then she take care of every, everything inside when I'm hungry and things like that, don't matter what, what time, she's happy to get up and make sure I'm eating. You know. So that's the secret to making it through the main event, not mm. focusing on poker? You know, the, the, the secret is, you know, I, uh, I, I didn't get burned out by poker because, you know, I, uh, I stay home with the, with the family all the time. And, and every time when I play, I just miss the game so much. And, because I don't play much anymore. That I don't makes play sense. cast Absolutely. game. I, I, I don't play every day. I miss the game. When I miss the game and I'm playing good. You play better when you yeah. play and when you don't play. You can mm -hmm. focus on other yeah. things. Mm -hmm.
Well, thank you for coming by, Scotty, and good thank luck so next much. year. And good luck in this year right now. There's a lot of WPT events coming up. Thanks. Thank, thank you for having me, but I'm promise you, Scotty, be back, baby. You know, there's We've got the 2008 nothing, main event champion here. That's right. There's <laughs> nothing can take me me down. I promise you, I will be back. Nothing but stronger. Okay. Thank you very much, Scotty. Scotty, win, baby. Scotty was clearly very disappointed, but at least he's optimistic about next year. Now, the final table bubble boy was Steven Garfinkel, and with his 10th place elimination, play ended. The remaining nine players had a day off before they played the final table. Reigning world champion at that time was Jamie Gold, and he announced the famous phrase, shuffle up and deal. The blinds began at $150,000, $300,000 with a $40,000 ante. The short stack going in was Alex Kravchenko with almost $6.7 million in chips, while the chip leader was Philip Hilm with $22.1 million. A few hands into the final table, Hilm relinquished his chip lead to Jerry Yang when they battled in a couple of very big pots. Yang went from the second shortest stack at the final table to the chip leader very early on. Within a few hands of the start of the final table, he had over $25 million in tournament chips. Right after that, Hilm and Yang clashed in yet another hand. Yang bet the turn with top pair and top kicker holding ace-king as his down cards. Hill moved all in with a pair and a flush draw. Yang called and the river was a blank. Hilm was eliminated in ninth place. The Scandinavian player was the largest chip stack at the start of the day, but the first player eliminated. Don't feel too bad, he still took home $525,000 in prize money. Alex Kravchenko stayed active with his short stack and gathered some chips. Longtime poker pro Lee Watkinson also battled with the short stack. He was eliminated in 8th place. He got all his money in preflop, holding an ace-7, and he was called by Yang, who had a dominating ace-9. The board brought no help for Watkinson, and he received $585,699 for his 8th place finish in this year's main event. Then, Lee Childs got caught up in a hand with who else but Yang. It seemed that no one could stay away from him. Although Yang had the best of his opponent's preflop in the last two eliminations, he was behind this time. Yang had Jack-8 against Childs, King Jack, but hit an 8 on the turn. Childs was out in 7th place, but at least he made $705,209. The next big action hand happened when Havad Khan doubled up the short stack, Alex Kravchenko. This made Khan the short stack, and Yang was still a huge chip leader. Just then, a few poker superstars stopped by to watch the final table. Phil Helmuth Jr. and Robert Williamson showed their faces, and as soon as they left, Khan and Yang battled again. That hand resulted in the elimination of Khan. Here's how it went. Yang raised to $1.5 million from middle position, and Khan, known as Rain Khan Online, re-raised to $6 million from the small blind. That left him with less than $3.5 million in chips behind. Yang went into the tank and decided to just call. Before the flop came out, Khan moved all in dark, putting the pressure on Yang. The flop came king 4 2. Yang made the call with pocket jacks, which put him ahead of Khan's ace queen. The turn was a three, giving Khan four more outs for a gut shot straight. He missed and was eliminated in sixth place for a payday of just under $1 million. After busting Khan, Yang had eliminated the first four players at this year's main event final table. All of the players left at this point were guaranteed to earn at least $1 million. Kravchenko continued to grind and doubled up once again. The next elimination came when R Raymond, Rami, and John Calmer got it all in preflops in a classic race. Rami had pocket jacks while Calmer had ace-king. The jacks held up and Calmer was out in sixth place but had $1.2 million in his pocket. Play slowed significantly when it became four-handed, and it was hours before there was another elimination. During that time, Kravchenko doubled up again. He lost some of his momentum when he doubled up Tuan Lam shortly before the dinner break. Kravchenko did get some chips back soon after that when he doubled up through Yang. It was still not much of a blow to Yang's massive chip stack since Yang was still ahead of the player who was second in chips by more than 2-1. to one. Around then, there were more poker pros that made an appearance. Mike Matisau and Sean Chi Khan were on the rail to split the action. Jack Effel introduced the infamous players and said, Guys, I only gave you 10 minutes, not 2 years, in reference to their penalties at the 2005 main event. Kravchenko was looking to double up once again when he moved all in preflop with Ace King and was called by Raymond Rame's pocket eights. However, an eight flopped and Kravchenko's quest for a second WSOP bracelet this year was crushed. He received $1.8 million for his efforts. Yang continued his aggressive play and raised to $2.5 million when he was re-raised by Poker Stars qualifier Raymond Rami to $8.6 million. Yang made the call and the flop came ace-jack-8. Rami checked and Yang fired out $10 million. Rami moved all in and Yang was faced with a huge decision. Yang eventually called and Rami turned over pocket kings. Yang did a double-fisted pump 
and showed ace five for for top pair. The turn and river did not change a thing, and Rami was the third place finisher, and he snagged almost three million dollars. There were two players left to play heads up for the eight point two five million dollar first prize and one of the most prestigious titles in poker. Yang had a huge chip lead with more than one hundred and seventeen million to Lamb's twenty three million. Yang won a few pots and increased his chip lead to eleven to one. Then, after a 16-hour final table, Jerry Yang emerged as the last man standing in the 2007 WSOP. On the final hand, Yang raised to $2.3 million and Tuan Lam moved all in. Yang quickly called and tabled pocket eights, while Lam showed ace-queen. Both players went in their respective sections to sweat out the coin flip with their supporters. The flop was queen-9-5, putting Lam in the lead. Lam's supporters exploded in triumph, but as every player knows, there are still two more cards to come. Yang picked up some outs when the turn was a seven, giving him a gut shot. He could win with any six or any eight. Because of the ESPN cameras that were filming, the suspense for the last card was prolonged. Finally, the dealer put out the river card, and it was a six. And Jerry Yang was the newest main event champion. Yang took down 8.25 million dollars and got to slap a championship bracelet on his wrist. Tuan Lam won the second place prize money of 4.8 million dollars. And that's the 2007 World Series of Poker main event in a nutshell. A special thanks to our tournament reporters for providing us with such great updates. Thanks for watching Card Player's main event recap. I'm Lizzie Harrison, and I'm Christiane Net for Card Player TV.